welcome back to our channel thank you as usual for watching us every wednesday here at sugar spice and everything nice as you may already notice we have someone of the opposite gender Yay. in our video Yay. Yes. <laughs> you know as much as we talk about men we actually do have male friends <laughs> and guys that we think are great so today we decided to invite nimrod to be part of our channel so today we're tackling as usual you know uh, a very interesting and relatively sensitive societal topic it's one of those things we always talk about a little bit here and there but we never really confront and essentially we're here also we made sure we had a guy here so that it's not just coming from a women's perspective so you know guys don't think we're just like ganging up on them or <laughs> everybody has different opinions we can share learn from each other start a conversation yeah. yeah so the topic today is toxic masculinity oh yes yeah it's so intense <laughs> toxic masculinity yeah. But, um, yeah. both words are very heavy in <laughs> toxic and Could masculinity have been Could have been <laughs> um but basically what we're just going to go do during this video is define what each of us thinks toxic masculinity is and then also just go back and forth answering the questions of how does toxic masculinity display itself in our everyday lives so whether it's in our relationships at work you know in your cafe across the streets um in the guy who like whistles at you when you're walking you know into a matatu whichever situation it is how we see toxic masculinity according to our definitions play its own role so who wants to start well, you're you looking at start, me Sharon. so it, yeah i think i think it's yeah, i don't think I have first. um my definition of toxic masculinity is basically um how men have been socialized to behave and behave in a way where they're not allowed to express their emotions they're not allowed to express who they are because ideally society says that that's not what men do um so i like for example if a man was to cry because he's feeling sad which is normal because like you know like when you get sad you want to cry but if a man was to do that it's like you like why are you crying like men don't cry and you know they're so weak and, so weak and be a man man up and like all those things these negative um things that people say and yeah that's my definition of toxic masculinity my time no, oh, right. oh, um, yeah. me just to chime in from where you've uh, left off i think it's a flawed perspective of how the male character should be like um and it's not for example just as you said let's say a young boy the mother passes on then the dad goes and tells him you know what uh, your mom passed on so sorry about that uh, but you need to man up and be a man don't express those emotions <clears throat> uh to me that's a side of toxic masculinity and uh, just to elaborate that i don't think toxic toxic masculinity is something we choose to have i believe it's something that's passed down yeah. and also cultivated by the experiences that we have um, um, as as men and the society and the pressures that come upon us from an early age <clears throat> and the things that we are taught from an early age that uh, uh, manifest as toxic masculinity um i guess the question i would ask is if i asked both of you one situation you think um that comes top top of mind that toxic masculinity plays a very self destructive role what would that be relationships yeah relationships 100% um and how we interact as men with um with women and ladies and uh, sisters or wives our friends um for example you know there's there's this perspective that you know as a man there's a way that I should act towards you mm. um that does not show my softness yeah i should be assertive i should be very you know very feisty in a way i should be the one to make the rules is either my way or the highway you cannot control me mm -hmm. or you cannot restrict me mm -hmm. um that's 
in a way, it brings no room for dialogue, it brings no room for companionship, it brings no, no room for helping each other and building each other up. That's one way that toxic masculinity uh, manifests itself in, in, in our day-to-day -day lives, in, in relationships especially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think he said everything, <laughs> basically. Um, I think another way that it manifests, not really manifests itself, but something that I've seen a lot of men struggle with is like how to express themselves because already they feel like they have so much pressure from society because society expects them to provide, to lead, to um, be the head, to, you know, all these things. So they can't really, like, even when it comes to, like, self-awareness and self-discovery, they feel like they don't have the time for that because, bro, like, I'm supposed to be making money and I'm supposed to be mm. doing this and doing that. Like, yeah. it's only with my demo and Like, yeah. me, I'm just supposed to make my money, feed my children, mm. make my wife happy, provide, and all of that. So as a result of that they just end up like bottling in every experience they've ever gone through mm. from childhood to adulthood because they've never really dealt with anything and that's why like Nimrod was saying a lot of us women struggle when it comes to relationships because we are with men who have never dealt with anything that they've ever gone through because they're told that's not what men do yeah and it, yeah, it yeah, just suck it up and be a man because that's what your dad does and that's what your grandpa did and like it's been passed down tradition wise and yeah. And do you think there's been a shift? Because I feel like as much as that's a thing that exists, like toxic masculinity, I do feel from like our grandparents' generation to our parent mm -hmm. parents' generation and now to us, there has been a shift where men are allowed to a certain extent it's not a lot like it's really it's like you know snail's really? pace kind of thing but men are allowed to a certain extent to express their self, themselves in certain ways and i see this in two types of ways there's one where like just more than our grandparents men can feel things more than our grandparents like granddads could feel things yeah. and then also the fact that it's not so much that men can't feel it, it's that there's certain expression they're allowed to have of it. So, you know, like you can be with your partner and you know, even sometimes I see this with my partner where I know he's going through a feeling that anyone would describe as sadness, but he displays it through anger. Mm. Yeah. Because that's like a slightly more, as a man, it's more permissible it's to, justified. exactly it's yeah. more justified to be angry that than to actually right. just cry in front of me and be like babe this is messed up and i don't know what to do you know and i think that it's so frustrating because one you see this like in relationships which is also you know like the bedrock of the loss of our lives and then you also see it even in the workplace right like instead of your boss let's say who's a man telling you this thing you've done it made me disappointed mm -hmm. or you know i expected better of mm -hmm. you or i know you have the talent to do more be better instead he translates his reaction to you through aggression that doesn't accomplish anything yeah. and doesn't build to any growth but rather just makes you feel inadequate just mm -hmm. instantly with no kind it's like lack of constructive growth or criticism in any way I think I think to toxic masculinity doesn't give us men uh, room for self-discovery, mm -hmm. and that in turn um, expresses itself with a very unfulfilled life, where these frustrations that you're talking about come from. Um, if 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 society has told me I cannot be sad or I cannot talk to my employee um, and express what I'm feeling towards that situation. It's easier to go the toxic masculinity mm. route. Yeah. It's just easier. We we don't like you know our structure. We don't like opening up. We love the walls. We love the sitting back and you know. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I don't want to explain myself. I don't want to explain what I'm going through. And I think that's also built in because men are not very expressive. We're not very expressive from the get. So even that 
toxic masculinity sort of like enforces just the nature that because I don't think toxic masculinity there's there's a place of being masculine mm. then there's a place of being where it's very excessive and it becomes toxic mm. and um, if we don't understand our masculine side which is a path of self identity where God created us as men you know because we're, we're different that's the truth but there's a way that it, we can be different in a healthy way yeah yes yeah. And everyone can benefit. And everyone can benefit from our differences and from our uniqueness. It's not, yeah, it's not something that should be shied away from, mm -hmm. and say, oh, as a man, um, this is how I am, you know, mm -hmm. this is how I can, this, this is how as a woman you should be. Those stereotypes just don't help the cause. Jared is like rolling, <laughs> rolling her eyes. At the, this is how I am. Yeah, thing, because because that's the biggest. That's my biggest. Um, Thing because I feel like we can unlearn and this is something that I always encourage you yeah. like you can unlearn the toxic behaviors that you have grown up knowing just like educating yourself and knowing that you know what maybe I'm not always the one being hurt maybe I have some bad toxic things that I need to work on mm. maybe I'm not always the, the victim you know maybe I need to like work on this and fix this and you know, be better at this, and I feel like it's slowly happening. Yeah, because the internet, there's more knowledge, there's more books, and there's more podcasts, and there's more like information about such things. So I just want you guys to just continue yeah. at it. And, and I think I think people have now got into the root issue, mm -hmm. uh, which, like I said, is not something people choose. It's something that has been uh, cultivated Still, yeah. and instilled in them. Yeah. You know, for example, um, me having grown up with um, a single mom, I always felt the need to protect her. Mm -hmm. I always felt the need to be stronger uh, than I am, you know, at a young age, seven years old, thinking that I can fit into my father's shoes, mm -hmm. you know, and protect my mom and do things a specific way in a way it has influenced me and me seeing that the root issue is me not growing up with a father and allowing myself to trust that my mom can take care of herself or even just you know work out some few issues without me mm, yeah allows me to take a step back and you know express that nature of you know what i can be vulnerable yeah i don't have to have all the answers i think you actually answered one of the questions i was about to ask you nimrod because i feel like whenever i have this conversation with people one of the major questions that comes out is who does the burden fall on to help reverse this idea of toxic masculinity like is it is it a personal burden is it men helping men and a lot of the time i do get reactions that's like well you know women have to help us because you know the, i mean at the end of the day they're the ones who <laughs> who are like become the victims of toxic mm. masculinity you know and bros are like but well, i don't want to talk to a dude about that stuff i'd be like my guy like why are you misbehaving mm, you know mm. yeah just chill like can you actually <laughs> express yourself <laughs> you know like no one is men are much more hesitant and so they're much more willing to sit and watch a ma another man that like, carry out toxic masculinity and not stop him or not be like that's not cool than if a woman was to see him and do that to let's say another woman and be like hey dude like you the way you just reacted to how it was not necessary wasn't cool so like where should that burden be placed and like how is it placed now and like moving forward how should that change well, I believe majorly it should be placed on um, the men. It should be placed on the men because the such excuses like, oh, she doesn't understand me, mm. crumbles. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. um, and I think accountability is a very, 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 very key issue to us men. We need to have brothers that we can be accountable to. And we need, we need not fear confrontation. Yeah. Because if I speak to my brother, He's more able to understand me because he knows that I can relate with him. Yeah. And if I speak to him and confront certain issues of toxic masculinity that I've seen in him, um, 
and help him change, not just confront it, but help him change and uh, give him guidelines and work on this together, uh, I think we can be able to see a very, very drastic shift, more than we've seen even now. So yeah, the, the, the burden is on us men, majorly, but even there's a place to play uh, for the ladies as well, just to, you know, if there's something that you see, there's a way to call it out nicely without being so, you know, without being so aggressive towards that issue, but still constructive, yeah. but, still, but majorly it's for us men and not pointing fingers mm. to the women and saying, oh, this and this, they don't understand me. Mm. Then if they don't understand, you find someone who does. Find someone who does and talk to them. Like, what's your biggest takeaway from this conversation? Oh, my biggest takeaway from this conversation is um, we need to get that point where we, <clears throat> sorry, become so selfless and so humble that we can be able to reflect, uh, she said, then seek help. Mm. Seek help. And also get to that point where we're able not to criticize and judge when someone comes. To you. to you for help mm -hmm. and um, it's, it's definitely a hard issue as you said it's definitely a hard issue where someone needs to take some time and deeply reflect on the impact they are, they're, what, what they're doing has on others and really just know their God given value that you're not meant for this toxic sort of masculinity you're meant for something greater you're meant for you know upholding uh, every person in society it might be your sister, it might be your mother, it might be your wife, and bring them to the level where they also find their full potential. Mm -hmm. ah, all right, guys, I think that was an awesome conversation. Um, I hope you guys also really benefited from that. As usual, you know, we love to hear what you think. So don't forget to leave a comment down there. Um, let us know your thoughts. You disagree, you agree. Yeah. And I just want to use this chance to say thank you, Nimrod, for taking the time. Because we actually spent some time getting yeah. ready for this yeah, video you and you actually have to up. wait, so... Don't, don't even get me started. <laughs> exactly, so, yeah. so thank you for taking the time. Thank you for having me. Yes. Yeah. And, and please tag all your brothers, fathers, yes. uncles, uncles, cousins, boyfriends, husbands. <laughs> <laughs> I could go on. Yeah. But all the male people, you know, please bring tag them, them to the party. Yes, bring them to this conversation. I feel like it's very important. And yeah, I thank you for watching. Yes, Bye. so see you next Bye. Wednesday. Bye. Bye.